Hello pilots and welcome to season 4 of Flight Academy brought to you by Out of Art Gaming. As always my name is Phil. Full format rules and lists are in the description below and you can see all the lists in the video linked in the top right hand corner of the screen right now. But continuing to join me for this round of Flight Academy we have... It's James, it's game 4 and I'm back for more, hooray! <laughs> No, it's almost like, yeah, um, game four, and we have more B wings for you. This you time, it's not, it's not the stress boys. It's the stress boy and the, the his stress, stress provider. Boy. Yeah, like his supplier. It, yeah, Gina's tens dealer, I guess. Yeah, um, it's it's interesting that we have two B wing lists and. They are completely different. The only similarity. Like at some point, they. I mean, I know they did it a little bit with Hera, but they they maybe could have diversified the abilities a little bit more. Yeah, because they are. Because now brilliant. I look at a beam and I go, "Oh, that's just going to stress itself." I don't even need to look at the pilot. Well, I mean, Ted, Brayden, and Gina all have like stress mechanics like that. Netron Pollard kind of does because he has the rotate off of it. I'll be honest, I don't know who that is. I don't think I've ever <laughs> seen that pilot on the board. He is the lower initiative of the pilots and he's the one I added when I did my quad B-wing list. Um, surprisingly good fun. Really enjoyed that. But um, yeah, I was saying, like we've got two B-wing lists and the only things that are the same is that we have a 10 dub and they both have stabilized S4s. Other than that, they are completely different. So it's interesting to see how these two will end up towards the end of the tournament. See if you fly B-Wings, should you just be flying the Stress Boys, really? So that's what Scott has. And then Madbots has uh, the Jedi, the, the other yeah. Jedi in the tournament. Yeah, the two Etters, so Obi-Wan with the Mighty yeah, Guild Tie. Tricky to hit already, and these are the stealth device variants. Like, if you hit yeah. them, you deserve an award, even if you don't get the kill, I think. Oh, ab absolutely. I mean, if you're at range three, they get, at range three through an obstacle, they get six dice. It's crazy. And they have the force to back it up as well. It's now just... these B wings do have ion bombs, and if they can catch one of these frail little fighters, then that could be great. The the ion bomb won't remove a stealth device, though, will it? It just no. does ion. Yeah, the the ion bomb only does damage to remotes, yeah. so it won't actually damage the ships. But being able to control where that ship is going to go is almost as important, if not more important, than actually causing damage. Because if you know that it's going to have to do a one forward next turn, either straight or bank, you, you can anticipate that. Can't, yeah. Can't yeah. use any shenanigans to get some distance on you. And these ships rely on their insane maneuverability. They've got their system phase move, they've got their boosts and barrels after. Um, Again, kind of similar to the Delta Sevens. If they they love to get you in bullseye, I mean, it makes um, sense. Get... They are similar in style of play, considering how similar they are, you know, in universe. Yeah. I mean, personally, I'd probably still take Delta Sevens over Etters in the current game state. Um, God of the days where. You'd see two Etters on the board, and that was a full list because of the amount of stuff you had on them uh, and the crazy bid. I think they were like fifty. So with the bid. Uh, scenarios, particularly the uh, the salvage ops, you know, you can't really pick up anything with with these fights. Yeah. Sal salvage mission is it's a hard one for high mo high mobility ships. Which is why I think, I, I feel like it kind of balances out though, because you only really need one, maybe two in a list, and then you bring other stuff to back them up in other ways. Yeah. 100%. Cause, 
that is something I didn't find particularly fun flying against before scenarios was just lists that just just dodge you. Yeah, clearly, like that's their whole thing. I mean, on one level, like if you do come up against a player who flies them really well, it's nice to see, but it, you just become sort of like a, you just become an obstacle for them to dance around. You're like, okay, right, yeah. Oh, yep, okay. I see what you're doing. I'll, um... Should we call it there? Yeah, yeah. But none of that. We look like we are going a more aggressive this time. So, Gina... Yeah. Agots has uh, split up his Jedi quite significantly. Yeah. I'm not sure how good of an idea that is, especially with Shakti being so far away from Obi-Wan. I was going to say, which one is which? Obi-Wan is the one with the mining guild tie on okay. the back. Shakti is the one with the keyboard key on the back. Because... Why not? Um, yeah. I mean, I, I mentioned it to him. There yeah. goes, there's, there's the six dice. Six green dice. Still having to spend the force. And yeah, I guess so. Um, but yeah, I mean, if Shakti is a little bit far away from Obi Wan for my liking, you kind of want her to be at range zero to two so she can trigger her ability so you can save that focus. Let me just check how it's six dice. It's normally three. Yep. Extra one for range. Extra one for range. Extra two for stealth device. No, you actually one, one for stealth device. One for the obstacle. Oh, the obstacle as well. Yes. Because of because of the way Gina's arc was, closest to closest wouldn't be through the obstacle, but closest to closest was out of arc. So the arc went through the obstacle, which triggered the six dice, which is the maximum dice you can roll. I was going to say, I, I think there is a, a maximum now. Yeah, it is six, which is a bit annoying, because I was having a chat with someone the other day, I was like, oh, with this combination you can roll seven dice, and they're like, you can only roll six, and I was like, oh, that's a shame, that would have been really cool to be able to trigger that combo. But, but it does for... prove, you know, take the shots even if you think they're impossible, because force over one to spend a force. Uh, yeah. Making everyone spend a force off six dice, I mean... We have seen green dice fail so badly before, especially rolling that many. Um, I've referenced it a couple of times, but when in the commentary wars, range three through an obstacle with stealth device, rolled all blanks and then lost stealth device, and I think it nearly, I think it nearly half pointed his star viper. It can happen. Yeah. Green dice do not like you. I'd still prefer them to white defense dice in Legion, though. I will say that. Yeah, those those are not good. Oh, there is the upgrade that he needed. But uh, did we? Did he have? Yes, I think he did have. Bullseye, so that's proton cannons, which I like that being on there. Proton cannons are really, really fun. I mean, if he, he just needs to get one bit of damage to, you to take out that stealth device. Yeah. And this might be the attack to do it. It is. It is. Oh, okay. That's two evades and two blanks. That it's is. One, it's one damage, but. It is a crucial bit of damage for Scott. And it's a loose stabilizer on Obi Wan Kenobi as well. That's the you have to go straight one. That's the you have to go straight, otherwise you suffer a damage. You don't want to suffer a damage when you've only got two hull left. So yeah, I'm going straight. Oh, that's great for Scott because he knows that Obi Wan has to go straight, so he can basically if he's that's interesting. Maybe he's forgotten that Obi-Wan has to go straight. I mean, maybe? 
I mean, loose stabilizer fixes itself, right? It's not uh, an action to fix. Uh, yeah, it fixes. I think you so can set an action to fix. Yeah. Some repositioning, I guess. But I just don't. I mean, I have my own bombs on his list. I, I, I guess throw one down. Hey, I. I previous videos we were completely wrong about bombs so what do we know absolutely i mean i would have preferred to trajectory simulate for it to be honest but then again could that have got in the way of cheetah later um oh and here we go so that was a system barrel roll from shack t now we get the trajectory simulator from tendum see that seems good that seems ideal because if shack t you anticipate Shakti is banking in. And if not, that kind of closes down a lot of that. It's interesting that um, initiative has actually come into play somewhat in the, the system, system phase, phase, which I feel like doesn't happen a lot. It happens so infrequently that everyone goes, how do we do this now? Yeah. Oh, I mean, there's that several bank. games... Because I, I don't often use upgrades that have system face stuff, like the ion bomb that is now a, tr a problem. Uh, I say to my friend, Do you have anything that happens in the system face? And if they say no, I go, Great, we can just skip it entirely. Yes, 100%. Um, I feel like there. Oh no, you can't barrel roll because she's already done it, hasn't she? And oh, that's, and that's not that's a it. fail boost. Oh, that's not well, that's, ideal. that's ion then, isn't it, really? Yep, that's ion. That is absolutely in the crit and the ion. These uh, these Jedi are going in some very specific places. Yeah, and we know for a fact that it's not going to be a one bank from Shakti because that doesn't fit to the left, and I can guarantee it doesn't fit to the right because she also won't be able to barrel roll off the back of it. What is Ted doing? Going straight. I feel like okay, oh, turning. Yeah, I think you're right. Maybe maybe Scott has forgotten that Obi Wan basically has to go straight. I mean, not necessarily. Could ignore the crit, but I feel like that's very risky. Yeah, very very risky. Um, Obi Wan is moving now. I can't quite see what he's dialed in there. It's a straight. That's good. Uh, three straight. Looks it. I think that's the safest choice. Yeah. And, I mean, without knowing where the Gina is going, Obi Wan is actually safe. I mean, I kind of anticipate Gina turning in towards Obi Wan just purely yeah, I think because. Maybe, maybe uh, barrel roll every distance. No, not doing it. Okay. Did he take any action? I didn't... Uh, I think he might have actually action to repair. Oh, okay. You yeah, because the, the card's flipped over there, so... Oh, Gina's got a pretty good shot against Obi-Wan. Yeah. I think, yeah, get that target lock, and if Gina can... I mean, Gina's got tractor beam, so a great combo right now would be to yes. hit primary, then tractor beam barrel roll OB to the left. I feel like tractor only really benefits when you can either use it in conjunction with a shot, or you've got an ability that does it outside of a shot, which again lets you tractor and shoot. Yeah. Or if you have one person using it and then a bunch of other ships to shoot yeah it's definitely it was so wisdom. situational that i never bothered taking it yeah oh that is another crit onto obi-wan which is unknown okay but he's alive he's alive um so, is this the tractor beam? Oh, that's a shame. Nothing coming from that, just focuses. I'll tell you what, though, if he'd have managed to tractor beam Obi-Wan in front of Tendum, yeah, that would have been incredible. I mean, 
Madbots could have taken the stress to turn around and take a shot at Gina as well, but... Shark T has lined up a decent shot, though. Yeah, it is Bullseye. Um, so, Marksmanship is live. Is this auto block Range 2, I think, so... Oh, that's a bit of a shame. Spending that. Do you remember Marksmanship? Yes, you do. Again, it's a shame that Gina's got all the shields. It's all easy to remember Fortune. those abilities, though. Get into a habit of oh. using them so that you yeah. don't get them when you need it. It's like um, first turn, if you know that you're nowhere near getting a shot, taking that, um, taking like a, a focus or just doing an action in that first turn, even when you know it's going to be inconsequential, it kind of just sets it, sets it in your mind of move, action. Action, yeah. It also, for me, sort of just goes, okay, that ship has done its action, it is, it's done. Yes. I can move on to the next ship. Yeah, because some, sometimes, some people like to keep their dials by their ship cards, or like, not right by the ship, so it's another... It, it's, it starts to get quite messy with, like, bumping and everything too close together. I, I will say, oh, I'm just going to put the dial for this particular person on, like, by their card. But for the yeah. most part, yeah, I try and keep it near the ship. One I mean, thing I do, which maybe is a, a bit excessive, in, particularly in tournaments, is I'm very careful about where I place the dial on the ship. Yeah. I don't want to give away where it's going. Like, for example, oh. like Shark T has the dial on her right, which makes me think that she's probably going to go left in some way, because you wouldn't want the dial in the way of her maneuver. Not that the dial is still going to be there at the time, but that's just in the back of my head. Yeah. And I know that's that's excessive thinking for yeah. me to put the dial down, but that's that's me. Uh, I, I think what's just happened there is that Madboss has done a system move and then just got to do his move, which unfortunately has given Scott knowledge of where he's going, but it looks like it's not going to matter because Tandem is still stressed and anyone that was paying attention will know that Open One's not going to enjoy that. Yeah, Charlie, there we go. Just go straight. straight. Well, we know he wasn't going to bank at all. So. Yeah, le left and right would have been a horrendous idea. And I wonder if she's going to get eye on again. But yeah, that oh, trajectory yeah. simulator followed up by one out the back. That's that's great. Yeah, for for control. That is it's a shame. There's no damage there, but Ion is very effective. It's it's meant that Scott can just go. All right, you just stay there. I'm just going to go deal with your friend over here. Yeah. And also looking at the shots that Shakti has. She could take a bullseye, but it would have to be at 10 numb. Well, the 10 number has, they are on the same health, actually, saying that. Yeah, so. it's further away. True. Ooh. But there we go. We got a bit of foreshadowing earlier. A good bump. There is a well, good, bump. Good for Scott, bad for Madbots. Yeah, does. I'm not sure if Gina has a hook there, actually. It's very close. Um. No, I think. I think. I think probably yes, but it is close enough to provide a level of doubt. On one, one health, even the range zero shot could finish Obi Wan. Oh yeah, maybe one hull. No, nothing. Okay. No. Sorry. <laughs> okay. I, I, was, I was just feeling sad about Obi Wan in a really poor position there. Uh, so that's because of Bullseye, so three hits. It all, every time I see Anetta do that, I always a bit like, it doesn't feel right in my head. But it's a printed, it's a printed attack arc. Because I know oh, that obviously yeah. you, can't, you can't do like secondary weapons and turrets and stuff, but it is a printed attack arc, so if they do have it in Bullseye, they can do the three dice. Unlike, say, the Delta Seven, where you can't add calibrated laser targeting on a yeah, because it's it's a different. Oh, that is just out. Is out okay? It, 
I, I mean, again, we looked at it, and you thought yes, I thought no. It was it was close enough, and it was yeah. I mean, I feel like Sharks. He takes the shot at ten, and yeah, is for some nasty crits that can maybe protect Obi Wan. Absolutely. I mean, if he, if Shakti can trigger a weapons failure, that would be ideal, or even a console fire. I don't say that. Um, Tendum's going to shoot first because Scott has initiative. Oh, Scott has initiative. Sorry. Yes. Oh well, that's. Mm. And that's not a bad shot. Two. Oh, that's a really good shot. Ooh. Oh, one's green dice were not awful. Any... It's the only way to put it. They were awful. They, they were not. Even that six die at the start was like, well, you got to use a force still. It's like, really? Oh, all right. oh that is powerful. I mean, um, know why everyone doesn't like flying. Yeah, absolutely. So it doesn't seem to be very good at it. Oh, that's, that's that, a good shot. That's a yeah. great shot. Remembering the so, ship. Yeah, a hit crit. So half pointing ten on there, but that's the end of the game. So getting that kill on Obi Wan did yep. seal Madbot's fate there, unfortunately. So really well flown there by Scott. Some good really eye good, bombs. great eye on bombs and just controlled the ebb and flow of the game with those what those B wings. They are very powerful. Yeah. So, really well done there, Scott. Unfortunate for you there, Madbots, but James, thank you very much for joining us there. You're welcome. And guys, let's have a quick look and see how the table is shaping up for round three. So, we still have Ben at the top with 14 points. Scott, with that win, putting himself into second with 12. Josh is on 10. Wes, with his impressive destruction of those interceptors, is in fourth with six. Uh, Madbot's next with five points. Myself with four. Andy on three. Connor on one. And unfortunately, Fraser's still yet to score a point. But so much more action to come. So don't forget, guys, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and we will see you next time. <laughs>